Almost Like Lincoln, a conversation with Frank Loden. Our guest today is former Illinois Governor Frank Loden, the only man to ever turn down the Vice Presidency of the United States. Good afternoon, Governor. I was born in Sunrise County in Minnesota near the Wisconsin border, northeast of the Twin Cities. My father was Lorenzo Loden, a blacksmith by trade and a sometimes want-to-be lawyer. I grew up in rural poverty. There were ten children in my father's family. I later had four children of my own. My family is buried in Union Cemetery in Iowa Falls, Iowa, where I came with them at age seven years old. I went to school in Iowa Falls when the chores would allow. At age 15, I had completed my schooling and I became a school teacher in Hubbard, Iowa, where I taught until the age of 20. I also served as an assistant principal in Iowa Falls, Iowa. At age 20, I decided that I wanted to be a lawyer. So I went to the University of Iowa and studied stenography, which was cheaper than law. I later taught school a little longer for about a year, and then I moved to Chicago, Illinois, where I studied law in the evenings in a three-year program. I was valedictorian and completed it in only one year. I practiced law for about 20 years and became a self-made millionaire in Chicago. I later became a professor at Northwestern University. My wife was Frances Pullman, a daughter of the Pullman railway car fortune. We had a good life and we had four children. Since I was now financially well off, I decided I would like to try politics. Politics had always fascinated me and I knew that I was just as intelligent as the people who were practicing in politics. The policies were very interesting to me. I first became a representative in the House of Representatives. I later ran for governor with John Oglesby as my lieutenant and was elected on November 7th, 1916. Tell us about your philosophy and why you are successful. I was a socially and fiscally conservative Republican. Most people were back then. The world was a lot less complex than it is today. We were not yet a world power. We were just coming through the First World War and learning about income taxes. I was, got a reputation for being very efficient. I was able to cut taxes in the days when you had to balance the budget if you did it without hurting people or hurting the economy. I was a conservative in the best sense of the word. I was also known for being honest and being a good manager of government. Why did you want to be president? Well, naturally, if you're in public service and you're fortunate enough to be elected and you do a good job, your name is going to be mentioned in the same time as the presidency is mentioned.
rivals in 1920 when I had my best chance were General Leonard Wood, Hiram Johnson of California, Calvin Coolidge, the governor of Massachusetts, and a little known newspaper publisher who had parlayed his newspaper into being a U.S. Senator of Ohio. Nobody gave him much of a chance. The convention was in early June of 1920. It went two weeks and ten ballots before anyone could get the proper amount of delegates to win the nomination. It went back and forth. I was sometimes in the lead, sometimes second. Eventually we had to compromise. the nomination. I had nothing against the man personally, but he was clueless. He was not qualified to be president. His main qualification seemed to be that he was everyone's friend. He enjoyed golf and playing cards and doing a little drinking, even though prohibition was at hand. His good friends of choice soon got him into trouble, and it wasn't long before we had the Teapot Dome oil scandal. I knew we were in trouble when the man was elected, and he won in a landslide. Scandals were just too much for him. He suffered a stroke and died in the summer of 1923. The whole thing reminded me of the chicken houses I'd seen around Hubbard in Iowa Falls. The fox had just been let into the hen house one too many times. That was not conservative good government. Furthermore, other scandals came out into the open after the president died. It was quite embarrassing, but a lot of it was hushed up. The whole mess was dumped into the lap of Vice President Coolidge, who became the president in the summer of 1923. farmer just like me. He was known to sleep 11 hours a day. 
The economy was good and naturally Coolidge had no trouble being re-elected in a landslide. I was appearing on the cover of Time magazine and was offered the Vice Presidency of the United States. I didn't want to be Vice President. It seemed to me like an office where people went to die. I didn't want to be second in command of a ship that was possibly slowly sinking. Did you run in 1928? Yes, I ran in 1928, but my chances were not as good as in 1920. My opponents were always trying to cook up some type of financial scandal on me, or a donation scandal. By 1928, it would have been very difficult for me to turn things around as we entered the world's first Great Depression. Thank you, Governor. You're very welcome.